Disclaimer. This is a brief practical guide for how I use Mastodon as an artist. It is not meant as a super involved, all encompassing introduction to the Fediverse for everyone, but I hope it can prove useful for people in a similar boat to mine, especially in these trying times. I was personally going to take more time to make this video, but because Twitter decided to set itself on fire, again, leaving artists and other creators with more stress and uncertainty about their internet presence and livelihoods. Again. I guess we're just gonna get this video out fast. So I do apologize if there's anything I miss or if anything ends up looking janky. If you see me reading literally from a script right here, we're just, we're just going. We're just gonna get this out. So chop chop, let's go. So. What the heck is a mastodon other than a big tusky boy? To explain that, I think we need to just very briefly explain the Fediverse as a whole so you can see why this is a bit different to the social media you might be used to. I think the easiest way to explain this is with the fantastic infographics made by the user Jane Adams. Let's go through them together, shall we? So, you may have heard recently about the Fediverse or the new social platforms like Mastodon and PixelFed. The Fediverse is decentralized. Each hub or instance is a server, a community. I tend to think of it like a little town of shared interests. So you can see and interact with other people on other hubs. Servers might also defederate from each other based on community input. If a server routinely allows content that isn't allowed on another server, it may be defederated from. How do people find each other on the Fediverse? Anna loves plants. Bob likes the pub. Good taste. As you can see here, they can just have a chat with one another. The internet has ruined me. Ooh. They can find each other using their username and their server, just like email. So how do people pick a server? Think about what you'd like to see in your home timeline. Why should we give a shit? <laughs> Decentralizing moderation allows communities to set their own standards on advertising, spam, bots, information quality, and NSFW content. You have transparency and control over things like data mining, AI training, searchability, and privacy. Keep that in mind. And here are some options for other decentralized alternatives to the other very well-known social media apps. We are going to be focusing on Mastodon because otherwise we'll be here all fucking day. Ah. <clears throat> As was mentioned in the infographics I just showed you, Mastodon is a decentralized social media platform that doesn't have ads or algorithms like the centralized ones do. If you're familiar with TweetDeck, you might find Mastodon quite similar in its look. I think the best way to use Mastodon is either on your desktop computer with columns enabled or on your phone. There are many other apps as well that you can pick. I personally just use the browser link on my phone. I don't know what it's called and I haven't had time to look it up again. <laughs> We will go into more details about what makes Mastodon different in the section's features and drawback. But for now, just keep in mind that Mastodon has mostly been used and maintained by people who need online safety or might otherwise have had trouble with your standard social media, accessibility issues, for example, harassment, privacy issues, anti-LGBTQ things. So just log all of that into the back of your brain. Right. What you are currently seeing here? is what my mastodon looks like right now. I've kept this as clean and simple as I can for you. Let's start to the left here. This very much looks like Twitter, doesn't it? It's just your standard box of possibilities right here. Just type whatever you want and publish it or toot it. You've got attachments so you can add a picture or four, maybe include videos, whatever you like. You've got your polls and this is your privacy settings for your posts. So you've got it to be set as public or unlisted, followers only, or mentioned people only, which kind of functions like a DM, but not quite. More on that later. Then you have CW, which is a content warning. Again, more on that later. But if you click on that, you can type in here um, whatever it is that you want to warn people about. Then you have EN, which your, is your language. For me, it's English. Here is your post character limit. Uh, depending on what instance you're on, it can be more, it can be less. On my instance, it, which is mastodon.art, it is 500. And up here, you've got your emotes. More on that later as well. Right, okay. And then 
next here you have your home feed which sort of functions like twitter it's well old twitter at least it basically shows anyone that you are following and whatever they are boosting it is all chronological there are no ads there is no algorithm here then over here you have your notifications this is all of your notifications so people liking your stuff people boosting your stuff people mentioning you talking to you, everything is here if you go to the mentions this is where you will just have the people who are literally tagging you and talking to you and also this is where the uh, private conversations would also happen this is where it gets very exciting this is where you can also be following hashtags i have just kept it to master art here just to not overwhelm people <laughs> but like you've got all of these columns so you can just start adding hashtags and whatever you want to follow here and um, you can also follow a hashtag which means that it will actually arrive into your home feed and just here i've just put my profile so you can just see this is my handle and uh, these are some of my shenanigans more on this in a bit as well all right and then if we go all the way back here you see up here is the local timeline which you know how i was saying like instances are kind of a bit like towns that's how i tend to think of them um the local timeline is kind of like your town square so if you happen to be on a an instance that loves knitting you can pop in there and see maybe if there are other people who you're not following yet who are talking about knitting and then you'd be like hell yeah i want, I want to follow them this is the federated timeline oh no <laughs> This is the one I stay the fuck away from because this is chaos, my friends. This is where Mastodon gets the zoomies. This is where you've got all of your towns that you were federated with in one space. And it's all just there. If you want to stare into the chaos that is the internet, um, you can go and have a look at the federated timeline. Moving on. <laughs> right, so let's have a chat about instances. Do you remember in the very beginning when I was talking about how the Fediverse is made out of lots of little towns and things like that and how they all have a chat with each other, a bit like email? Uh, maybe you're watching this and you're like, oh, I want to try Mastodon out. Where the heck do I go? Chances are that if you've come across websites like spreadmastodon.org, which is a very good website, don't get me wrong, they will be pointing you towards the biggest and most well-known instance called mastodon.social, which is as... I'm recording this, been having some issues because there are a lot of people currently signing up because of what's going on with Twitter. <laughs> so I would really suggest, and I'm speaking especially to fellow artists here, that you find an instance that is smaller, well moderated, and is actually catering to your interests. For example, I am a master on art, but I'm going to show you many other alternatives, okay? First, you can go to Feddy Garden. I would really suggest that you just take the time to have a look at a place like Feddy Garden, for example, and just find a server that really speaks to you. Just hop on board and just imagine hopping into your local timeline that I showed you earlier and being in the, that, that town square and finding people who are interested in the same things as you. But yeah, don't be too precious about picking your first instance. Like if you end up just not liking it or not vibing with it, you can move. I will be linking to a guide on how you can just move your account to a different server you will be keeping all of your uh, followers things like that just not your posts right should we have a chat about what makes mastodon a bit different welcome back to my screen here mastodon has many features that are in my opinion fantastic so for example it has pins twitter also allows you to pin to your profile but as far as i know they've always kept it to one pin whereas mastodon will allow you to pin as far as i know as many things as you want i have pinned my stuff here my introductions at the top you have your public posts and you can have your followers only posts so there is a very nice level of privacy you also have the edit button and it doesn't cost you any money uh, you also have a different type of character limit so as i said earlier on my instance which is mastodon.art is a 500 character limit other instances will have more uh, just like with Twitter, I believe Twitter has that you can mute people's retweets. On Mastodon, you can mute people's boosts, but you can still keep on seeing their stuff on your feed. You can mute and block people just like you do on Twitter. You have emotes. This is something that I am exceptionally excited about. So different instances might have different emotes. And uh, over here, you can just see art originals. Look, you got you got little 
Liu Hacking gifts. You got lots of. You got Blob Fox here. My God, you got the bunnies. There's shit tons. A heck of a ton of pride stuff here because. As I have mentioned, I think quite a few times at this point, um, this is really a place where a lot of queer people come to try to feel safe on the internet. So there is a lot of support for, you know, the gay shit, which we like. Then we have other things that I appreciate, which is sexy stuff. Mastodon allows sexy stuff. Again, it depends on what instance you're on. So this is where you have to go and check, which you can do right here on the about section. So as you can see, I am on Mastodon art and I won't go through all of this because we don't have time. We're trying to keep this video as short as possible. Yes, on this instance, yes, you can. You can post smutty things. This is where content warnings come in. More on content warnings and etiquette in a bit. <laughs> but yeah, so as you can see here, I've used a content warning right here. And what it does is that it kind of collapses the, the post and if you then want to see more, you show more and then you get the whole thing. Yeah. I have set up so that I will see all of the content warnings like laid out by default. So like if I hadn't gone into my settings and set it out that I, I don't care, show me everything, show me all the tits, I don't care. <laughs> then these pictures would be blurred. If you are coming in to, to Mastodon and you see content warning stuff, it might be blurry until you click on show more, in which case the whole thing is revealed. And then of course you have hashtags, which is a huge, huge part of Mastodon, especially if you're an artist, hashtags are really important, right? So to recap, the features that I see on Mastodon.art include things like pretty much unlimited pins on your profile. You can set your stuff to public or private so you can have more privacy if you want to. You can edit your posts. You have a bigger character limit, limit so you have like 500. You can mute boosts. You can mute and block people as you see fit, just like on any other social media, really. You have emotes, which my dog is very excited about. <laughs> it, it allows sexy stuff, in fact, it's actually very supportive of sexy stuff. Mastodon is also very supportive of, of queer people and tries to keep queer people safe. It has a content warning system to be considerate of other people. Uh, and it has a, a huge thing about hashtags. Oh shit, I, I completely forgot to mention again properly because I'm doing this video so fast. The other very obvious big features of Mastodon, is there are no fucking ads. <laughs> There are no ads. And there's also, there's no algorithm. I know that there are a lot of artists who have to str struggle with like trying to game the algorithm all the time. There is no algorithm here. It's, it's all chronological in your timeline. It's brilliant. <laughs> okay. Anyway, now let's move to what I would consider kind of drawbacks of Mastodon. So first I'm just going to go through uh, a couple of things that might be drawbacks, but maybe not really, depending on how you look at it. As I mentioned earlier, there is no algorithm. Now, most people would be like, yes, no algorithm, finally. But I think what we tend to forget is the fact that the algorithm has kind of become a way for people to use social media. We're so used to it now that if you don't have an algorithm, suddenly, Everything is very quiet because what the algorithm does is that it puts stuff in your feed. It recommends things for you. It kind of feeds you stuff so that you have somewhere to start. It doesn't just feel like you've walked into an empty, quiet room and you're just like, oh, what the fuck do I do now? The algorithm actually allows people to find new things that they might not have been able to find before. And it also allows you, you know, for better or for worse, to kind of do the whole addictive, never ending doom scrolling. Uh, because it will keep on filling it in for you forever. Isn't that great? <laughs> if you don't have an algorithm, it just means that there is a completely different vibe there. If you haven't followed people, there is nothing being fed to you. You have to do the groundwork yourself when you start up. You do have to find the people to fill your feed up. Basically, follow, follow, follow. And then you can always unfollow people after. Just see what it does to your feed. This is another one that some people will find great that it doesn't exist on Mastodon. And some people 
will find very annoying. Quote retweets. You can't quote retweet someone. From my perspective, that's a good thing because it means that it doesn't have the same culture of like hot takes and like dunking on people and roasting people. <laughs> if someone has a big following and they don't like what someone else has said, they can just quote retweet them to their entire user base and then, you know, rip to that person. <laughs> you can't do that on Mastodon. So if you want to have that kind of discourse, I guess, um, it might be uh, a bit, cl it's going to be clunkier to, to deal with. It has a bit more old internet vibes when you chat to people on Mastodon, which again, I really like. I love the fact that it does feel more genuine. It does feel much gentler and in general, much fucking nicer to be on Mastodon. It's not stressful to me. But for some people, that's going to be very annoying. The fact that you can't do quote retweets, so you can't discuss things with people in the same way that you could on Twitter. Oh, quick thing to also mention about uh, the algorithm thing, while well, I remember. Um, because there is no algorithm, you can't go viral because you need other people to be boosting your stuff. You can't have the algorithm pick you out and, you know, lift you up. You have to have other people boost you. Another thing that's like, is this a drawback or is it not? Again, it depends. Um, this is, Mastodon is not Twitter. So it doesn't have the same culture with, you know, the quote retweets, like I mentioned. It doesn't have the same kind of discourse thing going on. It also doesn't have the same corporate culture that Twitter has. So you won't really find like a lot of companies and like celebs and stuff on Mastodon um, yet. I guess they're coming. Mastodon is much more of like a social, social media with that kind of like a social culture rather than celebs culture and stuff like that. These are things that are now much more of an actual uh, drawback, I think, for uh, most people. Um, just getting started is fucking annoying. Let's let's just be honest. Uh, you've never used Mastodon in your, li in your life, maybe, and you don't know what the fuck's going on. Now you have to find an instance. What's an instance? You know, I described all of this in the beginning. My my dog is pissed off. It's just annoying. It's not like you just click on a sign up button and then everything is fed to you. It is a bit more involved. But I just have to slide in there and just mention that once you've done it, it's so nice. <laughs> what you put into Mastodon, it's just... Mm. I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't think that you should at least give it a go. But it doesn't mean that it's not annoying to find. If you feel like, oh my God, I don't know what any of this means. I don't understand what, what is an instance. What is a Fediverse? Me neither, mate. Like, <laughs> I am not techie. I am selectively quite fucking thick. But uh, I have sort of been, I've been able to make it work for me and now it works really well for me and it's super easy for me now. But like, there has been moments where I'm just like, I have no idea what this is. I've had to ask a lot of people on Mastodon, like, what what's the thing about DMs? That's next, don't worry. Because I don't understand. It's It's a little bit awkward. Yes, it's clunky. And that is something that I think people might find that that is kind of the breaking point for them. The fact that it's not as smooth and slick of an experience as these private company owned social media. Let's get on to the DM thing. This is something that I literally had to ask people about because as I said, I don't know what I draw butts. I have linked my post in the description where you'll be able to see what other people responded with. So you can read all of that in your own time. But in short, <laughs> there aren't really DMs. That's not really how Mastodon works. You know how I showed you earlier the um, the, pub the public setting on your posts? At the very bottom, you had like on the person you mentioned. That's considered a DM. So literally, that means that whatever you are, you are typing to that person will only go to that person. Sounds like a DM, doesn't it? Yeah, but if you then go into your mentions, it's sometimes quite difficult to see what's a DM and what's not because they have like the little lock on there. And also, this is a PSA for you. <laughs> Please listen to this. If you are DMing and maybe, I don't know, you are talking about, oh gosh, this person, oh, they're so hot. I think I like their butt. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> if you are DMing or pri speaking privately to someone else, about a third person's butt, 
don't type in that third person's handle into the message because what you are doing is then inviting them in. You are mentioning them. So imagine maybe you have a crush on someone and you type to your friend on Mastodon, oh, I really like so-and-so and you don't think about it. You just go, I really like at Gooseface. But then you have literally added them in this DM. So now they could see it. Wow, that's awkward. <laughs> so please keep that in mind. And finally, uh, another drawback of Mastodon is the fact that there is no word search. But do you remember how I said at the very beginning that Mastodon has been used a lot by people who can't really feel safe or really use other parts of standard, you know, normal social media because of harassment and stuff like that. There is no word search on Mastodon, so I can't go in there and type in my real name tucka, 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 into the search bar without anything else. You have to search by hashtag. And this is by design because you do not want people to start to be able to search for certain things if they've got bad in intentions. And also it kind of removes the whole vanity searching your own name, which is probably a fucking good thing. Because you know there are people on Twitter who will just sit and just see what other people are saying about them all of the time. <laughs> you need to use the hashtag. So when you are posting something and you want other people who might not be following you already to see that post, be sure to put the hashtags at the bottom of what you are doing. Especially master art. Use master art. Okay. So we have now gone through a lot of the more sort of general stuff about Mastodon. What are the drawbacks? What are the good things? Now let's talk about being an artist on Mastodon. That's why you're here, I think, I hope. So you are, you are an artist and you've just signed up to an instance that took your fancy. What now? Right, I am now going to just do my rapid fire tips to get you started. I'm just going to be reading it straight through here and I'm going to be showing it to you, okay? As we go. Are you ready? The first thing I would say is you need to be getting yourself a profile picture and a header image immediately. So you go into your edit your profile and you get yourself an avatar and a header image. You know, something that really describes you. So when people are searching for other new people on the on their instance, they see something in the header image that makes them go, oh, so this is what that person is about. So this is before you start following people and interacting with people. Be sure to put an avatar and a header image in. People are much more likely to follow you back if they get an instant look at your vibe rather than the standard Mastodon avatar. Next, add your links. Add your links to your shops, your Ko-fi, your Patreon, what have you. Add it all here, get it all sorted. Next, be sure that you get yourself into a little introduction hashtag. Get that going. Here's mine just for reference. So I've got a, um, a new introduction here where I literally go into the hashtag introduction and I talk about who I am and um, add in photos and pictures. Be sure to do that. Especially like if you're an artist, this is where you really want to be showing other people what you do so that they go, oh, this looks interesting. And then they follow you just to find out more. If you want to go um, a little bit more OTT like I did, um, you can then, you know, reply to your own introduction and then you add a second one, which also allows you to add more pictures, because why not? Uh, where you will then collect all of the hashtags into one section, right? Okay, so now you've got now you've got all that sorted. The next thing you want to do is grab some piece of art or whatever. Old stuff, doesn't matter. Just start filling out your feed a little bit so that when people find you, they can see that you are posting things. So you have you filling out your your personal feed a little bit. Hopefully you already have some piece of art or what have you from your time on other social media. So just start posting them and include hashtags to that. Because as I said, with the, the drawbacks of Mastodon, things are going to look empty to start. So to me, this is like the exciting time when you are populating the feed the way that you want other people to see you, right? Now you've, you've set up your own personal page and it's all looking really nice. This is where you will start going into, like I showed you earlier, the local timelines follow people 
look, just follow loads of people. Go into the hashtags. Master art is very, very good. I also personally follow traditional art. I follow comics. I follow web comics. Uh, what else? Um, ink. Um, watercolor. So go and find people. Go and, and boost them. Just boost and follow like your life fucking depends on it. <laughs> just go balls to the wall with it. And yeah, when you followed loads of people, just see what it does to your feed. If there's some things that make you go, mm, I don't really like that, you can just unfollow it. It's fine. The uh, mastodon.art curator has like art events that you can go to or go to. You can follow with the hashtags. So you have like curator prompts that you can go and have a look at as well. It's just really fun social events where you can just see other people just doodling and just having fun. I think in other parts of the Fediverse, you've got like game jams as well. Like there's lots of game developers on um, on Mastodon. Don't be afraid to boost yourself from time to time. There is no harm in it. So, for example, if there's like a new influx of people, then go back to your introduction and just go and and like reboost it. See, I've, I've reboosted it. <laughs> of course I have. Because again, no algorithm. So it's not going to re like recommend your posts from two years ago, something suddenly in someone else's feed. Oh, yeah. Another thing as well is that you don't need to be afraid to uh, put like your shop links and stuff into your actual posts. So I've got a bunch of uh, just links because unlike some other social media, that doesn't mean that it's going to be like throttling your your posts or like hiding your posts or anything like that. You can link to your heart's content. It makes no difference. Go nuts. It's fine. Thank God. <laughs> and yeah, be sure to like um, boost other people's stuff as well. Like just share everyone's stuff around. It's just it's just very, very nice to see all of the activity. And, you know, I mean, look, look at all this gorgeous stuff. Look at all this gorgeous stuff. I mean... Just, just look at that. <laughs> of course, always remember to toss a coin to your admin. Also, you don't only have to post art. Like I am on, as I said, mastodon.art, but that doesn't mean that I only post art because like I'm not a content machine. I'm like a human being. <laughs> so if you want to do a bit of shit posting, go nuts. If you want to like chuck some memes at people or whatever, if you just, you're having a bad day and you just want to rant or whatever, go rant. If you want to be polite, put it behind a content warning. If you are for some reason maybe having like a bad day or you're just like wanting to type some stuff out that you don't want to share with the whole world, like you can just put it to followers only and just your lovely followers get to see your, your shit. <laughs> like that's fine too. But the main thing that we have to think about is the fact that as artists, we need to earn a living. My dog does not approve of it. He thinks capitalism sucks, but here we are. So there are plenty of... Oh, okay. Do you want to come up for a second? Okay. Look. Thank you, honey. So, yeah. I mean, um, as artists... We live in a capitalist society. We got to earn that money. And I know it's it's very, it's kind of built into us now that we have to be these content machines. This like social media isn't social anymore. It's like marketing media almost. It's ex exhausting. I'm telling you, like Mastodon actually feels, at least to me, like a place where you have the space and the breathing room to be a person. But also you have to think about, yeah, we do need to earn the money. And what I have found, this is just, of course, anecdotal stuff, but what I have found and other people have found on Mastodon is that they are actually getting work there. They are getting um, commissions through Mastodon. Uh, there are people who sell straight, like they, they don't even link to anything. They literally put stuff up on Mastodon and they sell it. There are people who uh, link stuff to like their Etsy. And then I, I, I followed this artist who I think is doing a brilliant job of like linking to their original art on Etsy. And then whenever it sells, they reply to that post with a big red thing that says sold. Thank you very much. It's also where I literally sold my um, John of Mastodon thing for the lols. <laughs> I have also seen 
that there is the the general engagement and like boosts and stuff that I I've gotten through Mastodon back when I was using Twitter as well. Hold on, you wanna do that? Okay. There you go. There you go. So yeah, back when I was using Twitter as well, I used to cross post basically. So I would copy paste whatever I was putting on Twitter and then I would put it onto Mastodon. And I would check the comparison between how much how much engagement I got. And I noticed that on Twitter, I just seemed to always get throttled or people just didn't seem to give a shit. And I still had more followers on Twitter then. Um, but on Mastodon, there was a lot more people actually like interacting with me, boosting my stuff. I've had lots of new people coming onto my Twitch streams through Mastodon. I have people who have like found my Kickstarters and found my artwork and bought my stuff through Mastodon. It just feels more immediate. It's nice. Should we just have a chat about Mastodon etiquette for a bit? Um, this is the part where you can just completely ignore what I'm saying. The, these, I mean, you can ignore everything if you want to, but like um, how inclusive um, you want to be is up to you, really. And how much time you want to put into having your work and your post be accessible to other people is it's up to you. I'm just going to tell you about some stuff that you can do and that some people do. I almost burped. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to retake that though. because <laughs> the dog's on me. So first of all, we have alt text. So I'm going to see if I can slide us over to the other screen with the dog on and I will show you what, what alt text is. Okay, there we go. So alt text is basically, you see this? You see that I've got these descriptions of each each piece here that I've put up. So whenever you are putting um, a new thing up, when you are posting something, you are attaching a piece of art or something, you have the ability to click on the edit button and put in a description. This will allow people with screen readers to actually access your, your work more easily. So for the visually impaired, this is an excellent thing. And it's also one of the reasons why a lot of people have been picking the Fediverse and, you know, Mastodon over other more conventional social media. Oh, are we done that? Okay. Um, don't really have, you know, the spoons that day to be doing alt text. There is actually an emote that you can put into your post that essentially gives consent for other people to come into your mentions and put the alt text in for you. Or you can also have a, uh, a bot that shouts at you <laughs> politely if you forget. This is what it looks like when you have not got alt text on. Do you see these little blue like dashes here? So you see when I'm hovering here, there's nothing happening. This is what it looks like. And I have noticed now with a huge influx of new people onto Mastodon. I love the new people. Yes. I've noticed though a huge number of artists who do not put alt text. And I would say that please, if you are uh, wanting to be more inclusive um, and you know, you want to make sure that as many people as possible can see your work and, you know, enjoy and appreciate your work, please consider um, using alt text. Also, uh, some people will not boost work that isn't alt texted because they just don't want to put work into their feed for maybe people that they follow who then can't enjoy it. And the next thing as well is content warnings that we have been mentioning throughout this whole thing, you know, here, here and there. So with content warnings, there's loads that you can do with this. The obvious first things that you think about with content warnings is like if there's something that's violent, gore, blood, uh, scary, scary nipples, uh, NSFW things, stuff like that. You can just put it behind a content warning and people can click on it if they want to. However, content warnings can be used for a lot more, not just for things that might be like spooky, like a nipple. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do it. Okay, hold on, go on then. Alright, well, um... This is what happens if we're just hopping into film like as quickly as possible. It's just a shamble now. Okay, whatever. Content warnings. So it can be used for many things. So for example, you can have content warnings for bad news. Some people just don't want to be blasted with the hell that is 
the world all of the time on their feed. So it's very polite that if you are sharing stuff to do with bad news or like horrible, I don't know, climate disasters and shit like that. You also have like mentions of anti-LGBTQ stuff, mentions of harassment and, and stuff like that. Putting that behind a content warning is also just very polite because there might be other people who've had to deal with that and they just don't want to see it. Then you have other things as well. Uh, again, it all depends on how inclusive you want to be. It's all up to you. You have things like eye contact. I try to put that in whenever I remember. So that for people, some people just don't feel great about having lots of pictures with eye contact in. You can put um, food talk. You can put alcohol talk and like drug talk and whatever behind a content warning. You can also use content warnings as like shit posts for fun. <laughs> Because as I said, like it it, um, it collapses the view of whatever it is. So you can make jokes out of it too. So you can have like punchlines hidden behind content warnings. You can just be creative with it. You can also have like longer posts. Maybe you are wanting to, to talk about something in a long-winded way. I would never. Then you can type all of that shit out. But instead of like pasting that into everyone else's home feed, you can then be like, whoop, just say, my morning ramblings and then people can be like oh ramblings i like it they click on the show me more and then the whole thing can just roll out <laughs> the very important thing to remember is that mastodon as i've said is um, a platform that is heavily used by people who have been harassed off other platforms so or they might otherwise feel unsafe so i think it's just a polite thing to keep content warnings in mind for whatever it is you're doing. Try to put hashtags at the bottom of your post. So this makes it a lot easier again for people with screen readers. So instead of having the hashtags littered in with the post, it's all just condensed at the bottom. Check the rules of your instance. Check what they are okay with, what they are not okay with. As someone who makes NSFW things, I was very sure to double check that um, they were okay with NSFW things. And finally, this is something, again, if you you have the ability to, uh, I highly recommend tipping your instance admin. No? Okay. But yeah, tip your instance admin if you can. They have to pay the server costs and they are the ones who are keeping all of this spam and crypto bullshit and NFTs and AI scraping and shit. They, they are the ones keeping that under control. They are the ones at the gate just being like, no, no. And yes, um, <laughs> and that's it. I think that's going to have to be it. I will be posting a sort of, I suppose, a starter pack um, in a description so you'll be able to see hashtags, like a whole list of hashtags that you can follow as an artist. You can see like the curator prompts. That's just another fun thing for artists to try out. You can find out how to migrate your Twitter followers over to Mastodon. There will be a link for that as well. You have like the general Fediverse Mastodon tip sites. I will put them in as well, like Fedi tips, Fedi garden, as I mentioned earlier. And just like, you know, go and find nice little random things like Mostodon. You can go and look at Moss. I love it. There is also Silent Sunday, which some people will find very strange. But this, just imagine that literally your feed is just pictures and silence. If you want to follow loot things, there are some hashtags, just a couple of hashtags. <laughs> that you can follow that I I frequent. <laughs> There's a lot more acceptance of kink and things over there. It's just it's just nice, man. <laughs> this is basically where we're going to end it. Like you don't have to watch any more. Like I'm probably just going to ramble on for a little bit about what I personally think. So this is like I think you should go try it. Give it a shot. If you don't like it, it's totally fine. But I think you should at least try it and see what you think. It's different, but I think it's different in a good way. To the Fediverse! Choo choo! Go see, go see, go see, go see, go see. Join Mastodon! Join Mastodon! <laughs>